some breaking news. Sam Kerr is joining Chelsea on a two and a half year deal. Wow, that's what it's all about. at his own schedule to see upcoming fights or catch up on recent events. Never miss a punch by setting reminders that alert you on your mobile device. I am here with the main event, Jay Swingler. How are you feeling? Absolutely fantastic. Oh, 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 he catches this and look at his body position and he has to pull that back around under his feet navigate fight night key moments replay the rounds of the action you want to see again and again to the water for the final time. He's won the race to go along with a championship. Absolutely magnificent. What a strike that is. The following program is recommended for those 16 and over as it contains sporting violence, possible bad language and flashing imagery. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. From the four corners of the world, to the four corners of this room, the fight starts now! Let's go! Well, after a stellar undisputed clash in Dublin, another explosive World Championship rivalry beckons this Saturday night. Welcome to Manchester, folks. We are just a couple of days away from Fight Night Live on the zone. Lee Wood walks back into the fire against the newly crowned WBA featherweight world champion, Maurizio Lara. Just 12 weeks ago, they did battle um, in a fight that you couldn't take your eyes off, Darren. It was coin dance with the devil, and for very, very good reason as well. Maurizio Lara reinforcing his status as the division's danger man. Lots of positives to take from Lee Wood in defeat, but that left hook that ended it all um, the danger will be present Saturday night. And once again, if Leewood is to be victorious, he has to get Oof. everything absolutely perfect. Doesn't Look, I think the blueprint's there, if you like, to, in, in, to some degree. Um, but then on the flip side, it's so evident that, you know, championship boxing is a marathon, not a sprint. And when you carry the power that Michelle Lara does, he's dangerous till the last second of the fight. Uh, look... It's, it's very hard. I'm stuttering a little bit because I'm thinking about my prediction and I'm finding it very hard, if I'm honest. But there's something about the way that Lee Wood was performing. Maybe just has, in my eye, I have him slightly the favourite. It was an... Just, yeah. I just feel if he can stay switched on, there was little adjustments that need to be made. The left hook, 
when he threw it, his right hand was down. And he, it, it's, it, the way he was positioned, Lee Wood, it was strange. He was kind of square on to the hook as opposed to it coming around the side. He was square to the... He threw it off the, the slip, didn't he? Yeah. Anticipating something else, I think. Yeah, and, it yeah. was a strange one. But I think the little adjustment, get that right hand up. I, I also, watching that fight again, I feel if he was to time the left hook, you should never hook with a hooker. But if he was to time the left hook, I'm going off on, off on one here a little bit. Marisho Lara's right hand is here when he throws the hook. Mm. It's so low, and we know that Lee Wood can, can dig. I thought the way he offset the rhythm of Lara with that jab, the stabbing jab to the body. Like, I could talk about this till the cows come but, home. Honestly, I yeah. was, I, I, like, it was such a good fight. It yeah. lived up to the expectation. We, we, we said that jab to the body could be crucial it, it, before the fight, uh, yeah. and that was because of what he did with Zhu Can. And I spoke to him yesterday and said, do you think that you abandoned that body jab a little bit as the fight wore on, especially when he hurt him with that right hand to the body, which just took the sting out of Lara. Yeah. Well, it didn't take the sting out of Lara, obviously, <laughs> in the seventh round, but it, it looked like he'd gone very flat. It did, but it hurt him. Yeah. It did hurt and, him. And the pattern of the fight changed from that point onwards. But he... Um, just see Eddie Hearn taking his uh, seat with Dara Foley in the cowboy hat. Terry Harper, of course, deja vu for her, having to delay her uh, fight seven days. We might try and get a word with her, actually, in between the undercard um, and the main press conference. Um, yeah, there's a few things there, lots of positives to take, but the danger, of course, for Lara will, will always yeah, yeah. be there. We'll talk a little bit more about this um, when we head to the main event press conference a little bit later on. We've got eight fights um, on the bill Saturday. It all starts 10 past five, um, live on the Matchroom Boxing YouTube channel. We've got the debut of young William Crawler, Anthony's uh, younger brother by 12 years, in against Joe Hardy, Campbell Hatton, in against Michal Bulik, um, and kicking us off will be Aaron Bowen after a brilliant debut um, on the same card 12 weeks ago as Wood and Lara, in against uh, Ali Jasvenko. Um, so we'll talk all about them, and we'll hear from all of those uh, on the undercard as well. We'll kick off with Danny Ball and Jamie Robinson, uh, English welterweight title on the line, live on the zone from 7 o'clock. Um, Akif Fiaz, who I think the performance of his career Very so good. far against Dean Dodge, in against the real handful in, in Costin Ion from uh, Marbella. Terry Harper, of course, as I mentioned, um, making the defence of her WBA Super Welterweight title against Ivana Havazin, who was, of course, Jess McCaskill's mandatory um, for the titles up at Super Welter, but has agreed this one, um, big upon at 147, and has agreed this one because it's Super Welter, she's got time to make the weight and is a good fighter. And for Harper, I mean, not ideal. But the point she made to us, she could not have done this if this was at 1.30 because she wouldn't have had time to exactly. refuel and then contract again. Now, there is a little hush behind us, which means we are ready to go to the press conference and hear from them. So, uh, without further ado, our undercard fights for Saturday Night Live on the Zone. Let's hear from them with Eddie Hunt. Would you like the professional? Does it be new what you were doing? Beg your pardon, folks. I'll tell you what, guys, come back to us in the studio if we're not quite ready. They're not quite ready. That's all right. Live TV. That's what happens. Um, and the other one to talk about, of course, is Jack Catterall um, in against Dara Foley. Foley. Interesting but, fight, this. Well, it is an interesting mm. fight. And, and, of course, the last time he fought was against another South Korean in, in Josh Taylor. He was the unlucky recipient of that horrible wooden spoon robbery of, of the year, which nobody wants to, to have. But um, hearing the mood is buoyant in their gym after what happened on Saturday. I, of course, unfortunately missed, uh, due to my best mate's wedding, um, the, the festivities in Dublin. Just give me a, a try and paint the picture of the atmosphere and what, what it was like. It was incredible. Night. I think it was one of the most powerful ring walks I've ever witnessed, the Katie Taylor. I'd never seen her so emotional. Uh, you know, she was buzzing off of it. Uh, didn't go her way. I thought Chantel Cameron boxed very, very well and posed herself onto the fight instantly. But, I mean, if we can, you know, follow on from that, mm. it, we've got something special. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Uh, lots to come over the next few weeks on Design, <coughs> as I'm sure you're aware. Here is your man, KSI, with more. Yo, what's up? It's your boy KSI. And can we take a second to realize how sick the DAZN app is? There's just so many sporting events on it. On June the 3rd, we have the UEFA Champions League Women's Final. They got the NFL Game Pass, ladies and gentlemen. We got the PFL. We got the National Women's Soccer League. You got all Misfits events. How do you like it? Don't miss a thing. Now, yeah? <laughs> well, after that great start. <laughs> okay. Well, welcome back, everybody. Welcome to Manchester, ahead of a huge night of World Championship Boxing this Saturday at Manchester Arena, live and exclusive on the zone. The rematch between, in my opinion, the number 126 pounder in the world, Maurizio Lara, against Nottingham's Lee Wood. Tremendous fight last time out, the WBA World Featherweight title on the line, and a tremendous card as well, of course, of World Championship Boxing now with Terry Harper returning after not fighting last week and a co-main event that could lead to a world championship fight next 
between, of course, Jack Cattrall, the people's undisputed champion, and now one of the biggest entertainers right here, the upsetter, I think, as we call him, Daryl Foley, as well. A huge card, and we talk to every fighter up here, and we go to the three down the bottom table right now, three of our best young prospects, and, of course, making his professional debut, William Crawler, an incredible story, a young man that we saw in the changing room for years and years while his brother Anthony was in huge nights at the arena, of course, winning world titles as well. William, welcome. Um, huge moment for you on Saturday night, huge moment for the Crawler family as well, and uh, ready to go after spending years backstage at the Manchester Arena. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, thanks for having us. Uh, like I said, the second name's just a foot in the door, and then it's up to me to, to keep it open and Saturday night's going to be the first big step in me doing that. Obviously, and, uh, people talking about your brother, um, you want to make a name in your own right as well, but Open Doors, you know, a legend in this city, in, in the fight game as well. And those moments spending time with him backstage, those experiences will be key for you as well on Saturday night. No, of course, like everyone's asking, I'm a nervous and nah, I'm not one bit nervous yet because I just feel like to be honest, I feel like I'm with one of his fight weeks in Manchester, but um, it's this time it's for me. And uh, it's a normal surrounding, it's nothing new to me, this. And uh, I think that'll play a massive part in Saturday night as well. Well, look forward to the debut of William Crawler on Saturday night. Campbell, welcome. Another fight for you in Manchester. You know, one of our most active fighters on the roster, improving all the time now. People talking about the punch selection and, of course, your last few performances as well. A step up for you on Saturday night. This kid's coming off a, a big win away from home as well, but the improvements there for everyone to see. Yeah, getting better with each fight and I think being so busy has done me the world of good. We've just been going into training camps off the back of just doing one and building and building and I'm reaping the rewards of that. I think uh, starting to turn the public opinion where people are giving me the respect and uh, respecting me for making them improvements and it's going to be the same again this weekend. We have got to step up. It's a southpaw, so a few different challenges, but... The way I've prepared, I, I, uh, I think it will be a significant jump up again this time. And obviously now been very active over the period, into double figures now as well. Another eight rounds for you and looking to move into 10 round championship action potentially at the end of the year. Yeah, I think we're in touching distance of that. I've, we've got a lot of faith in my engine and my fitness and the technical abilities improving all the time as well and I think it's just a case of getting them rounds in, in the, on the night and getting the uh, experience of doing the longer fights under my belt which uh, I think with this opponent he it, it, it does look tough and I think it won't be a case of just going through going getting in there and going through him so I think on Saturday we'll get some rounds but I think I'll be able to chip away and show everyone that I will make a little bit of a statement I think I will be able to get him out of there forward to seeing you back in action on Saturday. Aaron Bowen, second professional fight, starting the show off for us, and a tough fight as well for you against a, a, a game opponent with a lot of amateur pedigree as well. Last time out was easy work for you um, in Nottingham as well on, on the first Wood Lara card as well. Looking forward to getting back in there. Yeah, buzzing. Um, good, opportunity for, uh, good opportunity for me to show my skills, good opponent, the right sort of step up at the right time and looking forward to showing what I'm about. Been a little bit of a layoff for you. I know you was due to fight slightly earlier as well, but a busy spell coming up for you, of course, here and then July the 1st on the Dalton Smith card all being well. Yeah, you know, I wanted to be active and you've, you've answered that for me. So keep being active, keep stepping up slowly and getting the right opponents and, you know, look to take them out of there, but, you know, win at all costs. Forward to seeing fight number two for you on Saturday. A fantastic English welterweight fight that's going to lead to bigger opportunities for both men, of course. Ball against Robinson. Um, Ginger Rocket, we'll start with you, mate. Um, it's been a while since we've had you on the show. Always entertainment, come on. Got beat early on in your career when you are at the stage where people thought you were going to go on to challenge for domestic titles. But now, with a great opportunity, up at welterweight, you're on a great run as well. Should be a cracking fight on Saturday. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show, Eddie. Um, I've gone back under the radar since I left Dave Caldwell. I've uh, joined stables with Scott Kahlo, he's done a great job with me in the last year. I believe I was uh, should have been English champion at super lightweight, but decision didn't go my way. So uh, just rebuild with four different styles of opponents, come back, um, and I knocked out a good opponent last one, one who didn't get stopped. So um, 
shows that I built into a nice waterway and the strengths there. And um, I'm just looking forward to becoming English champion on the weekend. And um, yeah, that's about it, really. And finally, from you, I remember watching your fights last time, all <coughs> action. I know you've changed trainers as well, but, but still the same ginger rocket. We should expect uh, that kind of fight on Saturday. That's what I love. I love it. I can't wait. And uh, just people don't know, I had uh, tested the cancer about four years ago, so I've been through a couple of demons and stuff like that. But I'm back here and I'm ready to do the business. There's not a thing what that man can show me what I ain't been through and put me in a situation where I ain't never felt in my life. So I'm buzzing to be back and this is a dream to me. Thank you for the opportunity. Well, congratulations on being here, mate. Congratulations. Danny, big chance for you as well. <laughs> a lot of people talking about you as a real legit contender for that British welterweight title, but a real test from Jamie on Saturday night. Should be a great fight. Yeah, I believe it's going to be um, a barn stormer. He's going to come and bring it, but I believe I have the answer to everything he brings. When you look at that division, obviously, there's a huge history in the, the British welterweight division as well. English title, a good step on. Is that for you the plan here to win this English title on Saturday night and then try and put yourself in contention for the Lonsdale belt? Well, yeah, that's it. Hopefully, I'll get through, get through Saturday in style and um, open doors up for me for the bigger fights. That's what we want. Well, look forward to a great fight. It's going to kick off our main broadcast on Saturday night for the English welterweight title, as is another great fight, costing. Eon against Akib Fiaz. This is going to be a tremendous fight. Akib Fiaz, one of the most widely supported fighters in Manchester, show, sold a huge amount of tickets. And this is a very, very dangerous fight. Cost him welcome. Um, it's a big fight for you. I've seen the tape. I've spoke to the matchmaker. You always come to fight. It's going to be a great fight on Saturday night. Bienvenido en primer lugar, Costín. He visto las cintas, los vídeos de tus peleas. He hablado también de las personas que arreglan las peleas. Tiene que ser una muy buena pelea el sábado por la noche. Sí, muchas gracias por, por darme esta oportunidad, por pelear este gran evento. Estoy, me encuentro muy fuerte, me encuentro preparado. Vengo a pelear y vengo a ganar. First of all, thank you very much for the opportunity and thanks for allowing me to be on such a great event. I'm feeling really strong. I feel like I've prepared very well and I'm coming to win. Aquí, welcome back. A quick turnaround from a, a fight in Liverpool as well. Great performance. But a big step up for you on Saturday night. Dean Dodge was a game opponent. This guy, I believe, levels above. Box better opposition on a good winning streak as well. Always comes forward. Should be a, a real fight for you on Saturday. Yeah, no, um, I'm finally at that stage in my career now where I can really get my teeth into the fights, you know, and enjoy sort of showing my level and showing my skills on the night. Yeah, so I'm excited. I expect nothing less. Again, huge support from Manchester. It's been a while since, since you've boxed here. That support keeps on growing. Again, you know, same question to you as you go through these development stages, eight rounds for you, and then really moving on to 10 rounds fight. I expect this to be your last one on Saturday. Yeah, I'm ready, I believe. Um, I've been in the gym sparring 10, 12 rounds now. So um, I'm, I'm on the door, sort of ready for that. Sort of step up last eight rounder, I think you're saying. So uh, I'm more than excited to be in them big fights, but you know, all eyes on Saturday. And I'm excited to be back at the Manchester Arena finally, yeah. Well, good to see, we're expecting all action fight in that one. We move now to the World WBA Super Welterweight Championship. One of the hardest things ever to tell a fighter that a fight has fallen through, especially just a few hours before they head to the, the venue. Of course, on Saturday, after the fight day 5K, I had to, was given the, the horrible job to go up to Steffi Ball and, and Terry and given the news that Cecilia Brackhouse had the flu, couldn't get out of bed and her dream fight on a dream card was off. Um, I couldn't believe how well, how professionally they took the news and also huge credit to our team for turning around a fight in just seven days for Terry Harper. And of course, big respect and credit as well to Ivana Habazin, who stepped up after doing many, many rounds with Katie Taylor in the build up to that fight to fight Terry Harper for the world title. It's an incredible turn of events and it's a really good fight as well. Ivana, we'll start with you, welcome. We've had so many back and forwards about the purse bid with Jessica McCaskill and it's a crazy game boxing, you know, and life is, is crazy in itself, but opportunities present itself. The opportunity arose for you to fight for the world title. You were ready, you've been in camp, you've been training with Katie Taylor and a chance for you to become a two-time world champion on Saturday. Yes, definitely, I wanna say thank you. Uh, but I want to share one <laughs> really funny story. So when I see, I wake up uh, and I open my Instagram and first thing was Cecilia was sick, the fight is off. And I call my manager and I said, I have feeling they're gonna call us. And 
one hour later, he's calling me back and he said, I spoke with the matchroom, they offer you the fight. I said, let's do it. Yeah. So, you know, like, um, <laughs> maybe it's a destiny, whatever it is, but like you said, boxing is crazy. <laughs> So uh, when opportunity is there, um, uh, of course, I, I came here to win. Uh, even I have a huge respect for Terry because uh, after, you know, like one week, it's, uh, I know that I am a completely different fighter than Cecilia. So um, I give her a credit to take that fight. And, uh, you know, like a lot of people was asking me, like, it's only six days, like, are you ready or something? I'm always ready. So, you know, like, when you, when you don't have big background, you need to be always ready. I think this is my opportunity and um, <laughs> I will do my job and hopefully win. But at the end of the day, you know, she's a world champion. She's here. So um, if she wins, that means she's a better fighter. But I think I'm going to win. Hard rounds as well with Katie Taylor in Connecticut for that training right. camp. Got you well prepared. I mean, you know, you've had, you've had a great camp. I know you wasn't expecting to fight on Saturday. But, but been hard sparring with Katie as well. Yes, it was, you know, I will tell you, uh, before that camp, I was really, I had a lot of doubts, you know, like, I was like, am I doing something wrong? Am I good enough? Like, I'm not good, you know, like all this stuff, but that after this camp, I was uh, doing a couple more sparring. I will not mention the people now, but there was a world champion and that was like really super easy for me. So, you know, like, mentality change and I was like I, 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 I'm really grateful to, to Katie because after this camp everything changed so you know like I think I'm in good place now and that's it I, I, I came to fight and my final question we talked the same question I said to Cecilia last week you are you know the bigger fighter Terry won a world title at super featherweight 130 pounds obviously we know she's coming into the weight at 154 as well but is that important for you as well the size that you have, I know that you most of your fights at welterweight. You're a former world champion at welterweight as well, but you are the bigger fighter in there on Saturday. Look, I fought even mid, in middleweight also. I had the biggest fighter, but at the end of the day, the heart is the more, most important. But from the other side, I know I have a power, right? So that's what I I think is my advantage. Um, like every uh, female world champion, I know. I, I, I'm watching the fight, so I know Terry's style. But um, I would say in the last year and a half, I changed a lot. So especially my last fight is not nowhere to see, and that was to totally different. So, you know, like, I think I can bring something new. What's going to give me a victory? Thank you, Ivana. Terry, again, crazy game. Um, you took it so well. You, you've had a lot of ups and downs over the years of fights falling through, obviously. <laughs> Winning world titles, the defeat to, to Alicia as well, but back, but very level headed now. And I think one of the keys to this turnaround is the weight. You know, if you were making weight for, for Saturday, I don't think you'd be here right now. You was able to, you know, adjust, postpone the fight and carry on, carry on training, carry on eating, feeling really fit and strong. And, and you know, you said that you feel even more comfortable this week than you did last week. And how big the car was last week kind of got to me a little bit. Obviously, I haven't been out since September last year, and um, just the anxieties of being in front of the media and the press and stuff, um, like I said, got to me a little bit. So, this week, back in Manchester, I fought here a couple of times now, and I just feel a lot more settled and at home. And um, honestly, I've been in fight mode all week. I've had road rage and stuff because, like, driving to the gym, I'm thinking I shouldn't even be here, but. Um, I'm just ready to get in the ring on Saturday night now. I feel like this, all this week is just overtime and I'm here to do one job that should have been done last week and um, I'm just ready for a scrap. Different opponent, but I guess the same challenge for you within the size, you know, a, a big, strong, former world champion as well, which was the same that was on the, the agenda last week as well. Expecting a, a tough fight here, someone that's been training hard with Katie Taylor, someone that's a proven world champion as well. This is another real fight for you. Yeah, the, the strength and the size, that doesn't bother me. I've been in the gym for the last God knows how many weeks sparring with, with Joe, uh, one of the lads from the amateur club. He's, he's got the height and size on me and I've been handling my, own, uh, handling my own in there. So that doesn't bother me. And I know how strong and physically tough I am myself. So um, I'm growing nice, nice into this weight now. And um, I feel like everyone's going to see a different side of me. Um, I've not fought since September and my style's changed also. So um, as well as... 
obviously that was my first fight up at uh, Super World, so a little bit more cagey in the fight with Hannah, but um, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable this way, and I feel like I really can um, express myself a lot more and more composed fighter and just just go to work. Well, look forward to a cracking world championship fight. Terry Harper against Ivan Hebazin for the WBA Super Welterweight Championship and a tremendous fight here that is really important in the landscape and picture of the 140-pound division. As I call him, the people's undisputed 140-pound champion, Jack Cattrall, against one of our new favourites, Darrell Foley, who has a chance, really, to put, I guess, their Irish boxing back on the map after a couple of disappointing defeats last week in Ireland. A massive fight for you. We saw you come over and upset the odds against Robbie Davis. Now, another level, another step up, but victory here puts you right in frame for a shot at the world title. Yeah, 100%. I've got to, got to get a bit of respect back on Irish boxing after last weekend, and that's exactly what I'm here for. Um, you already know me and what I do and don't do with our eight-legged friends. I'm here to fight, man. I ain't here to muck a bell. And uh, I know Jack's been out of the ring a long time. I know he's looking in the past and he's looking in the future. But just now I'm coming Friday night, Saturday night even. I guess for Jack, you know, the fantastic performance against Josh Taylor, it was a long time ago now. He has been inactive and the pressure on him, I guess, people expecting him to win, but win well to make a statement off the Josh Taylor fight. Obviously, you've got completely different plans, but big pressures on him. And do you see no pressure on you other than the pressure from yourself? You could completely shake up the division. I'm here, like, you just look, the last time what did the bookies have me? Five to one, now I'm 10 to one. There ain't no pressure on me. Um, I'm, I'm here just to, to, to do me, you know, I'm, I'm here expected to lose. I'm not one of those, those boys that, that come to lose, I'm coming to win. And I fully believe I will win. Um, you know, undisputed champion or not, I'm not a judge, I wasn't scoring that fight. I, you know, it was a close fight. For me, you gotta take it off the champion. There was rounds when he dropped him in the fifth or sixth round, and he walks over the ring and lets, lets um, Taylor engage him in the clinch. What are you doing, man? This is your chance. You've dropped the undisputed champion. Go, get him out of there. You start holding him uh, in the 10th, 11th round, get points taken off, holding on right long. Like, nah, I don't know, man. That's like, I, I, I see weaknesses in, uh, in Jack's game and I'm looking forward to exploiting them. I've seen your comments about levels. You know, it's quite a standard phrase that I'm levels above and it's yeah. about levels and he said that about you, you don't see that, you, you see yourself on the same level as Jack Hatcher. I, I want to know what levels, like what, who's, who's his best win? His best win is probably Nosebleed, right? You know Nosebleed? Go on. The guy that Josh Taylor bet because you retired up in Scotland because of a Nosebleed. Mm. You know, oh, yeah, you should know him better than anyone, didn't you? Throw him <laughs> under a bus. Apparently. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> but, um, Yes, yeah, so what levels, like you ran a very good elite fighter close, okay, but you lost the fight. And um, apart from that nosebleed, yeah, you bet Tyron McKenna, majority decision, I lost, I'm a, I'm a completely better fighter since then. Um, and I look forward to showing it, you know, anyone can say anything and I can see it be there saying I'm great, I've lost before, and I very well may lose again the weekend, it can happen. I'm not saying, geez, I can't lose. All my life, I'm going to give every last fucking bit me in that ring. And if he beats me, then you know what? He bent me. And I just hope as well, I'm a fighting man. I'm here from the opposite side of the world to fight. I wasn't a judge the last time out. I know everyone's very sympathetic. Oh, poor Jack. He's missed out. Two wrongs don't make a right. Don't try and rob me this time just to get him back. Jack, um, a real fight for you. A lot of pressure. I mean, of course... A huge amount of support after the Josh Taylor fight. It's kind of completely irrelevant now. You know, you've been inactive for a while. You have to make a statement on Saturday. You're chasing another shot at the world title. This man talks a great game and it'll be a real fight on Saturday. Yeah, I'm expecting a tough fight and I've said it from <clears throat> when the fight was announced. I know what fall is about and he's going to bring it on Saturday. Uh, that's what I'm excited for. Like you just said, it's been 15 months since the last fight and we've had three training camps in between that for fights that have fallen through. So. Uh, I've prepared, I've prepared well, uh, I've been in the gym and I'm just excited now to get in there and, and show this much the level. And that's the, the case for you, the levels, you believe you are a completely different level fighter to Dale Foley? 100%, uh, 
I've been boxing these domestic guys he's lost to for five, six years ago. Uh, and I know I've not had the fights to show to show the level as much. Maybe the last fight, I dipped my toes in at the world level, but I do believe I'm levels above and I will show that Saturday. Talk about the division, obviously our recent mm. signing, Regis Progra. I know you've got to focus on Dale Foley, but that's the plan for you, get yourself in a position, be active as well. I know you want to get straight back out in September, maybe even at the arena, but you've got your eyes on all those championship belts. Yeah, the, if you look at the 140, 135 division now, it's stacking up. You've made a lot of great signings and there's a lot of great fights to be made, but I think I was just speaking to Tony then, I can't look past Saturday. I've got a tough competitor in front of me. I need to do the job and do a good job Saturday, and then that's another conversation. Is, is, that, is that important, a good job? You want to get this guy out of there? I know everyone says, just get the win, but you know, to call out these big names, you think you should be dominating this guy? Listen, it's always about getting the win, but I put that pressure on myself. I need to perform, I need to put on a statement fight on Saturday. And finally, Manchester. Fantastic to be back, sold a huge amount of tickets as well. Good to be back on, on home soil and a huge moment for your career. Yeah, Manchester's buzzing, it's nice to be back. The weather's been nice and uh, there's been a lot of support since the last fight and uh, a lot of people are turning up to tune in Saturday. Well, look forward to, I guess, the unofficial eliminator for the World Super Lightweight Championship between Jack Cattrall and Dale Foley. Tremendous fight, tremendous undercard on what would be a huge night in Manchester on Saturday, headlined by Maurizio Lara against Lee Wood. We're going to have head-to-heads up here, and then we'll be back for the main event press conference. So there we have it. Seven fights on the undercard this Saturday night, live from the Manchester Arena on the zone around the world. All starts at uh, 10 past five, five o'clock for those of you heading to the arena, doors open. Um, Aaron Bowen will be kicking us off after a really good debut. He was in one of the fights of the Commonwealth Games and brought one of the crowds um, of the Commonwealth Games in the summer um, last year. Fell short against Taylor Bevan, but a really good scrapper, solid, big um, for the really weight. And uh, well, got the job done in one uh, on his debut. Kind of the dream start for him and, and out again already. And I think on top of that as well, and you're always looking at the, the not necessarily the bigger pitch, picture, but the total package. Yeah. He sold bundles of tickets. Was it like 400 tickets yeah. or something? And I think, I think actually he struggled a bit with the tickets because Coventry are away and they're his club. <laughs> so at the weekend. But I think on, on a normal Saturday, we'll be seeing him do sort of three, 400 yeah. tickets upwards. And that's a good Incredible. But I mean, go back to the boxing, a very, very good boxer. He'd be a very tough man to beat. Well, that's Danny Ball, who's uh, boxing for the vacant... English welterweight title against Jamie Robinson. He had a couple of opponents fall through, but Jamie Robinson knows all about um, obstacles and, and opponents falling through. He had so much bad luck during the pandemic. He did not need a second invitation um, to take this fight on three weeks' notice. He had a, a really good win over Ben Fields at your call about a month ago. And for those of you on the local circuit, you know Ben Fields is a proper handful. Never been stopped in 28 fights, taking a lot of good fighters the distance, Lee Appleyard and... Um, oh, no handshake there from, from the pair of them, but no doubt they'll be doing that after the fight on Saturday. I think that one's a really, really good scrap. It's still to show um, that one. Yeah, I think it could do, and it's a good fight to, to open the bill. That'll be 7 o'clock. I think you're at the commentary desk with me for that one, yep. are you? Good yep. stuff, lovely. Um, and Aki Fiers, who we saw shot off with Jack Catterall, the mood in their camp is uh, buoyant after Chantel Cameron uh, did the business. And by rights, they should really have all eight belts at £140 in that gym. But as we heard from uh, Eddie there, it wasn't to be for, for Jack Catterall 18 months ago. But really good challenge for him in uh, Dara Foley and a good challenge for this man in Costin Ion Aki Fiaz in the performance of his career so far against Dean Dodd starting to put things together and uh, said to me he's going to make Super Feather eventually I think this one's been made at £132 and he's been sparring Nick Ball who physically obviously short stocky explosive really good preparation and, and sparring for him he's of course been sharing the ring with Jack Catterall um, as well and, and picking his brains getting lots of advice and really growing into um, his shape as well, so we'll see those two weigh in tomorrow. And on the right there, Ivana Habazin, of course, as we heard, was, was training with Katie Taylor and sparring her ahead of her fight with Chantal Cameron in Dublin at the weekend, has stepped up, who was the mandatory challenger for Jess McCaskill's belts at 147, and uh, the late notice has given her time, with a decent camp behind her and good sparring, to step in and take this opportunity. And for Terry Harper, I mean, just, just a relief, I imagine. Oh, absolutely. She would have been so disappointed. What a card that was for her to to be on last week but the the, the magic a matrim if you like they've managed to, to make this happen just a week later uh, and she'll be over the moon yeah she will and we have cyrus pattinson i think on the desk with this uh, for before the bell he's had i think two of his first five opponents fall through between the weigh-in and uh, and the fight so he'll be able to talk to us all about how that feels and uh, with dara foley what a, a brilliant character he is he was out just six weeks ago in liverpool came in 
to face Robbie Davis Jr. on very little notice at all. And of course, it was a bizarre ending to the fight. He knocked Davis Jr. down early in the contest, which obviously caused some kind of injury and a fracture. Um, and then, of course, his leg went in the third round. But you take the risk and you, you reap what you sow. And he is here in a massive opportunity. And of course, with the signing of Regis Progre to, to match and boxing, the WBC champion at 114, in a lot of people's opinion, the best in the world right now, the winner of this could be right in line for a shot at him. Terry Harper said just now you heard the pressure of the media. I hope that doesn't extend to us because you know obviously we're not really professional media, Dan. We're just two pieces that they call Speak for yourself. Well, yeah. No, I do speak for myself. Um, but lovely to have you back. Bit of deja vu. Um, and as Eddie said, wouldn't have happened if this had been £130 because the, the, the amount you'd have to rehydrate and then go back. Um, so in a weird way, this being at 54 has been a slight blessing in disguise. Um, how do you feel? It's a low, much, low key, much lower key week this week, isn't it? Yeah. Um, like I just said, I think I let last week get to me a little bit. Uh, it's such a big card and yeah. um, I feel a lot more settled this week and just enjoying it and relaxed and um, I'm here to do one job and that's Saturday. It should have been done last week but it is what it is and I'm just so grateful that Eddie and Matchroom got such a quick turnaround and obviously for my opponent, she's been in training camp so she was ready and yeah, just grateful to be here. Talk to us about this week then. What did it look like for you? So you find out that the fights were happening, then what happens? You, you're back in the gym, you, what do you do with your weight? Yeah, so I obviously got it, but there's nothing nothing I could do about it. And I think um, the fact that they got me out this week well, made it a little bit easier to, um, to like, um, well, I don't know what I'm going on. But so, yeah, so I was supposed to be in Dublin f until Monday. So I, we came home Sunday uh, early, back in the gym, Sunday night sparring, just because we didn't want to leave it too long. Yeah. Um, we know sparring just to keep kind staying of a sharp. bit of a lighter spar, a bit of a Yeah, just, spar. just six yeah. rounds and then... Um, and then once once Sunday were out of the way, I think that's what I needed. And then it just fight mode back into fight week, and I just honestly I've been in fight mode all week. So I'm like all this like anger and stuff built up. So like I'm going in in the ring with some mean, mean intentions. <laughs> really. yeah. like that one missing. Yeah. That one missing last week. And Was it? Yeah. This, this week I feel I feel the spite, and I want to get in there and do a do a number really. Do you find it does take the take quite a lot out of you doing a lot of media and a lot of interviews because I always think that when you watch me especially Katie Taylor she's normally quite quiet tucks herself away but she couldn't afford yeah, to yeah. last week but you do look at fighters and think every conversation you have to have everybody wants your time everybody wants five minutes with you but for you that's that's you know several hours during the week um, is it quite important to sort of manage that if you get to a really big fight at some stage maybe undisputed or unifications to really manage your energy and make sure you, you're doing what's best for you yeah last last week I was drained like especially come uh, Sunday morning um, and I just think like I said this week I'm just I'm literally going to do what I need to do with Matt Truman and zone and try and save the energy for for Saturday night but uh, I, I just needed a few days at home a few a few nights in my own bed and then I fully fully rested and recovered and uh, I'm just ready to go so we can expect a fast start then yeah definitely <laughs> good stuff <laughs> Perfect. well listen we won't keep you any longer with that I really appreciate you coming to speak <laughs> to you. us as always Terry um, you, put your mic down there and go and do what yeah. you've got to do for you Thank thanks you. so much mate we'll see you again soon good luck on Saturday uh, Terry Harper there um, uh, replacement of Ivana Harbazine not not worlds away from Celia Breakers I mean stylistically there yeah. are, are little changes but I suppose they just have to make sure she's at the best at getting job done yeah. I mean I mean she'd be over the moon first and foremost that the fight as here has presented itself it would have been so easy to say yes that that's so, uh, it's never really happened to me before not a week different so I, I was intrigued as a former fighter how do you manage that week uh, but you know she's level-headed she's switched on she's in safe hands with Steffi Ball uh, and the rest of the guys in the gym so she'd be raring to go uh, and that leads us on to the build towards our main event. We'll be hearing from the fighters as we did just 12 weeks ago. An incredibly quick turnaround and what a night it was. Builders dance with the devil and of course you could see why there's young Akin Fias who will know that be uh, drinking in the atmosphere for the main event on uh, Saturday night. And I think we're going to bring Mr. Dara Foley in, who we had the great pleasure of meeting last look, time out. You look like the Irish Crocodile Dundee. It does. A like, <laughs> little bit of a double influence, yeah. <laughs> See many Crocs in your time down in the... That's who he uh, spars with. <laughs> yeah. He's wrestling with gators. Do you know what? I actually have not to Northern Territories, you know Yeah, what it mean? is, yeah. Thank God as well. 
Well, listen, like you said, you know what I mean? If they want to get in there for a couple of rounds. <laughs> well, I should talk to you. Only six weeks turnaround between the last fight and this. And you... 11 May. Is it, was it 11? Yeah. I beg your pardon. I'm sorry. Liverpool was... The time's flying. I had a look. I must have been They mould into oh, each March, other, of course. They? Sorry, I thought it was April. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so talk to me about the turnaround. So you went home. Um, did you know you were you were sort of going to be out relatively soon? When did you get the call off this? How much notice you, you, did you have? You boys are going to love this one. Let, let me... Let me um, Here we go. I'm looking forward to this. Let me paint the picture. <laughs> Had a week at home, hadn't seen the family for a while. We're in Bali, the island of the gods. You said you were going to go and have a pina colada on the beach, didn't I, you? I, I fit in all right there. Had a couple. <laughs> um, last day, we're sitting there looking onto the picturesque countryside. Amazing. And I'm just waiting for the brekkie to come out. Scrambled eggs from memory. Beautiful. And um, I'm going through my phone on uh, YouTube. I see Eddie Hearn and announce his new sign and Jack Hatchell. I watched the first minute of and the love height. Sorry, the love hearts in Eddie's eyes. And we're going to have a little tune-up, <laughs> a little warm-up made March of, uh, made of 27, then Progray and Taylor and all these names. He keep mentioning. And I started laughing, and the missus like, well, why are you smiling there? She says, I'm, I'm going to get the... Oh, I'm fighting catch up. She's like, what did they... Did you get an offer? I was like, nah, just wait and see. So I didn't say anything, obviously, because if you if you make the force move... Back, back, in, back in your head in this like, heyday. Back in the 80s, you, you see a nice girl on the dance floor, you make the force move and then you wait for them. So I'm, I'm like, nah. My manager rang me. Surprise, surprise, eight hours later. So can you speak? I'm like, Jack Catchel. He's like, what? How do you know? I says, I know these things, mate. The world works in mysterious ways, so... I mean, they didn't need to ask me twice, and here I am. Um, obviously, the last opponent he fought was a southpaw, a different sort of southpaw to you. You watched that fight, what did you make? I know you said he didn't do enough. I mean, he won that minimum 8-4. You, you have to admit that, right? He did win that fight by a comfortable stretch. What did you make of his performance? What are the problems he could pose you on Saturday? Um, yeah, look, it was a close fight, man. I'm not a judge. Did you, you think it was I mean? close? Well, if you watch it with the commentary switched off, oh, I know it is. Pro. Yeah, I mean, I, as a commentator, you do learn to How tune that score out. It? Eight four to Catrell, minimum. Yeah, well, yeah, I had Catrell winning the fight. Yeah. What yeah. do you boys share scorecards on? <laughs> no, spinning <laughs> <laughs> around the yeah. Scary if you think we share <laughs> but, a brain. But, yeah. but regardless, though, you yeah. know of the level that Josh Taylor was at. Yeah, yeah. You know Catrell's up there. Yeah. Are you, uh, <laughs> It's hard, you know, all this talk of levels, etc. Are you saying we'll find out how good Jack Cattrall is Saturday night after fighting you? Yeah, or maybe we'll find out how good I am. Is that, is that, that might be a better question. Yeah. We'll find out how good you are, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've, I've, everyone's saying, where's this career resurgence came from, the age of 24? I've delved into it, look into it. I've been with this new trainer over here for the past five fights. I'm on the field. I'm looking great. You know, it's, it's, you can watch, you can watch fights from anyone from years back and they're going to look different. I'm right in my prime now. If have, have we seen the best of you yet? Do you think? Um, Is there more to come? Yeah, there's more to come, man. There's more to come. I mean, once you have the right dance partner, if if you have someone that ACDC had to remix their song, remember that one? You shook me all night long. <laughs> yeah, the know, remix yeah. of a jack. Yeah, you hold me all <laughs> night long. See you later, guys. <laughs> <laughs> there, wait, you know what? Um, Let's just fight. Don't hold. Don't hit low. Don't hit the back of the head. Don't try and do all that. Your level's above me. You don't need to do that. Come box me. I'll come do you, fight Do you me. study your opponents? Have you watched yeah. lots of Jack? Yeah. Do, you, do you watch him? I'm a boxing fan, yeah. so I watch, I, watch, uh, I watch him when he bet Thomas Stalker how, however long ago alive. Eight, nine years back. Wow. That's you a know? long time, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, obviously, the, the signing of Regis Pro Grey as well, the, the, the main man in the division right now with the WBC belt. Talk of maybe um, Subio Matis being a, a free agent and a few promoters in for him. I'm sure Eddie will be, will be one of them. If you get past um, Jack on Saturday, Saturday, and I know you'll say when I get past him, but is those, are those the names you want next? Those are the things you deserve, do you believe? Jack Cattrall. That's, that's it. That's who I'm fielding questions towards. Okay, fine. But on, on that question, I mean, all these names that they're mentioning for Jack Cattrall, when I win, then they have to mention them for me, right? Or whose hometown am I going into next, you know? Maybe next time I might be up there on the other side, sitting at the right hand of the father instead of the left, you know? OK, good stuff. Well, listen, mate, always a pleasure to, to speak stuff. to you. Thank you, new um, gents. We will uh, see you at the weigh-in tomorrow. Couple of pina coladas uh, after. Couple of pina coladas after, maybe Saturday night, if you, if you get the win, when he gets the win. You stop <laughs> saying if, man. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Thanks very much for coming to us. Um, all the best. So, Darren, I mean, he, he is, if nothing else, totally confident. And I have to say as well, 
didn't have any kind of notice period going into the Robbie Davis Jr. fight. Yep. 11 weeks ago, by the way, folks, apologies. I must have just got my, my months mixed up. It's not that, not that difficult. Um, but he, but he, did, he yeah. said, look, no excuses. But he went, he won the fight regardless of the circumstances. He's in this position. This is a much bigger opportunity than Robbie Davis Jr. for him. If he wins Saturday, he has to be in that conversation. 100%. One, 100%. Yeah, of course. No doubt about it. And that, that is the, the cat, carrot being dangled. That's the pot of gold. That, you know, what, what more motivation do you need that, than having a potential world title shot as your next fight? Um, you know, talk about the Robbie Davis Jr. fight. I don't think there's any question that he would be thinking, Dara, that, oh, you know, I was lucky there, because he did drop him. There was the knockdown. Do you know what I mean? He was looking competent. He was looking composed. He was looking relaxed. And I think for that, you're never going to think to yourself, oh, I got lucky there because of that. Do you know what I mean? So I think he goes into this fight. He knows that he's a good talker, but he knows the task at hand. He knows how good Jack Cattrall is. He's a boxing fan. He said it himself. He's going to go in there fully prepared, and he's going to have to be at his best. But I've no doubt the character that he is, he, he wears his heart on the sleeve when he's in the ring. He leaves it all in the ring. We're in for a good fight. Good stuff. Lots of action uh, still to come on the zone over the next few weeks in the boxing circuit. Also in football, Women's Champions League final live on the zone. Take a look at this. We are into the final, and uh, that's amazing. And yet another European final awaits. Barcelona have the breakthrough. Wolfsburg have made Arsenal pay. One game, I think anything can happen. Champions League final live on the zone, as is a big crossover fight. We've seen plenty of him in the last few months, but it is Nate Diaz and Jake Paul that will do battle live on the zone. boxing through and through but there are some crossovers you go oh i like yeah. that one and i think we might have a beer and watch that yeah. One together. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's gonna be a bit of fun yeah, it will be looking forward to that one uh jay paul nate diaz live uh, on the zone but now we're building towards the main event saturday night uh, live on the zone from the manchester arena lee wood stepping back into the fire against mauricio lara um for the first time well it's 12 weeks isn't it ago they did uh, yeah. they did battle um wood was doing so so well that little right hand to the body just took the sting out of mauricio lara it looked like momentum was shifting he just held his feet and just kind of slightly abandoned the game plan, think, thinking maybe he was close to the finish line, got caught with that left hook and it was all over. We knew that danger was going to be present. It was exactly how we thought things could go for, for Lee Wood. It seems mentally like he knows, speaking to him privately yesterday, exactly what went wrong, exactly what he needs to do this time. He cannot switch off for a single moment, nope. or any second of this round. The thing I wanted to ask you, watching that fight back, different when you're watching it in the heat of the moment because there's so much tension and there's jeopardy there. You can watch it back knowing the result. You can just look more about the patterns and stuff. Lara started quite slowly. Is it because Wood didn't allow him to start fast or because he actually just, just took a while to ease into the fight? Bit, bit of both. Yeah. Bit, bit of both. I think he offset the rhythm so well um, with that jab to the body. You know, he was piercing out. He was sort of measuring the distance and that kept him thinking, Lara, all the time. Wood was very smart, very good with his feet. But on occasions, he did plant his feet, and that allowed Lara to work the body, which I, that's something he needs to get rid of. He can't do that again, talking from a Lee Woods fan perspective. Sort of active defence with the feet rather than trying to catch shots yeah. against I mean, someone who hits that hard. Exactly. Right. So so important being in control of the distance. You don't want to give up too much space. It was so good what he'd done at the start of that first fight. Bang, straight to centering, and he was pushing mm -hmm. Lara back. You're going to be where I want you to be. That way, there's always space behind you when Lara does mount an attack. You can move, step off, back to the centre of the ring. Um, it's look, it's it's little adjustments. It's don't drop your left, the right hand if you're hooking with your left, yeah. vice versa. You know, little things like that. Tighten the guard up. Like I say, he got caught with that shot when he steps inside. And he was square on. You know, just tighten the guard up slightly. Just little adjustments like that. I don't think with the experience Lee Wood has that. 
crushing defeat will have affected him too much. I think he understands, he's mature enough to understand this is the fight game, These, this is what can happen, but the blueprint's there. I was winning the fight. It looked to me that Lara was the one that could be stopped. I was, I, I, I'll be honest, I'll, I'll be deadly honest, I've been involved in this game for a long, long time. I couldn't really see Lara winning that fight. No, I think At we all point, got to that point, didn't we? About round he's, five, he's six. Wilted, he's faded, he's yeah. gone. His body language was yeah. negative in the corner, he looked tired, he looked flat. Wood was in the ascendancy, but in those moments too, we've seen it, particularly against Emilio Sanchez, who had Lara hurt early in their contest too. A little bit like Fabio Ward in, in, in some senses. I remember like Vladimir Klitschko was dangerous when he was hurt. Some fighters have the ability to really switch things on in those moments where they're down and out, and he's one of those guys. And, and exactly, Lara completely rubbished what I thought I knew. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You just think to yourself, that body language, everything, and then all of a sudden, that thunderous left hook out of nowhere from the gods come and lands and ends the show. There is one element of his, uh, his game, though, that, that is probably his biggest weakness to, to the body, Lara. Not massively vulnerable, but vulnerable enough when you've got a good, solid puncher, yeah. a precise puncher. First, first shot Lee Wood landed, I think, off the, off the high feints was that jab to the body, which we saw so effective against Yu Can in his first world title win um, at Fight Camp 2020. Um, he probably didn't use that as much as he, as he needs to Saturday if he's to try and take the air out. Jab to the body. Force to, force to reset. Yeah. Someone like Lara likes to load up on big shots. Yeah, at, at, like you, I think you said it, we might, you might have said it at the top of the show or off air there. He, he started doing it, but then as the fight went on, he just neglected yeah. that shot. It was so effective. And I think, look, not to get too technical, I think you can put the right hand on the end of that shot as well. The jab to the body, the right hand to the head. That straight right that, that he threw was very accurate, very sharp, and he found the, the, the target with the shot just because the guard of Lara, we have seen, does get quite wide. So, look, there, there's, there's a lot for him to work off of. That's the point mm. for Lee Wood. It's not like, you know, you're blown away in the first round. Like, well, it was still a bit of a gamble. We know what we've got to do. Let's go and do it. We talked about that, that right-hand position of, of Lee Wood. It was his undoing early against uh, Michael Conley yeah, as he yeah. reached for that parry. Uh, and, of course, it was just the, the hand that drifted slightly out of position when he threw that left hook against uh, Lara. But for large portions of the early part of that fight, that right hand was glued up by his temple. Very, very solid, very, yeah. very disciplined with it. Um, spoke to him yesterday. For those of you just joining us, by the way, welcome. If you did miss the top of the show, in that, in that conversation, we saw him uh, warming up Southport in the open workout yesterday. And I think offensively, he's really, really good as a Southport. Yeah. He also said it gives him an opportunity to reset himself. Because obviously, when you're using your, your, your left hand that much and it's that busy, you kind of like just constantly pours it out, creating that barrier. Sometimes you need a little bit of a, of a break just to let, let the arms reset and rest. Yeah. And he, he believes his, his left rear hand from Southpaw is his heaviest shot. And it's not going to be easy to defend against um, for Lara. So we could actually see Lee approach this um, from, from the Southpaw stance or on a, sort of a, a more frequent basis. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the, the left hook from you know a southpaw starts coming right round, arcing round with the low uh, right hand, right hand yeah. of Lara could be a very effective shot. I mean, I've I've fought loads of southpaws, and you know when they go wide with that left hand, your peripheral vision, you think you're going to see the shot, and all of a sudden you're hit. You know yeah, what yeah. is going on here? You know where did that come from? So what a great if you can uh, switch to southpaw effectively, and there's no flaws defensively because a lot of switch uh, fighters that switch it do have those flaws defensively. If you can do that and be effective, but then be able to resort back to your natural stance. I mean, what a great asset to have in your artillery. You know, to have that, it really does. You know, sometimes that could be what takes you to the next level, or it could be the difference that's needed in a fight of this magnitude to go and grab your title back. Yeah, certainly could be. Um, so for those of you just joining us, we are uh, a few minutes away from our main event press conference here at Lara Wood 2. Of course, the, the devastating finish in round seven uh, to the first fight 12 weeks ago. They're running it back straight away. Um, Josh Warrington made a couple of interesting comments um, at the beginning of the, of the week. Got a little bit of stick, but I actually think he's got a, a good point here. He said it seems very, very early to... Hello, Zelfa Barrett. Good to see you, by the way. And your, your hello, how are you, mate? Well. Say hello. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. Great, great performance in Cardiff, by the way. But you could, you can lift your door up if you want. Um, yeah, j just a quick one. Congratulations on, on a super performance in, uh, in Cardiff. How does it feel, uh, sort of, back again to winning ways and, and putting on a performance like that in front of a big crowd? It feels good, man. Um, it's not nice being on the losing side, so it feels good. I'm confident, ready to fight whoever. So, you're solid, mate. Oh, <laughs> solid. Oh, chicken rice and peas, man. <laughs> what, is, what is next? What's the, what's the aim? Who do you want to fight next, Joe Cordina? If Joel's, I would fight, I'd love to fight Joel, but, you know, he's, I'm seeing him wants to do unifications, and I believe it's all risk, no reward in his eyes, because I believe I'm one of the best in the world. And off my last performance against a tough opponent, who Oscar Vardy had a bit of problem with, Diaz had a problem with, 
with preparation, I, I believe I beat everyone. And my only two losses are of lack of preparation. You know, I'm a fighter, so when they give me the right time, when they give me a time to fight, I'll just fight. But maybe it's the, the, the daft side of me, but that's just the way I am. How do you feel at this present moment? Is there, I guess it's mixed emotions in some respects. In some ways, there's that bit of frustration that you're not getting the opportunity that you want. Or is it, well, I'm there now. It is eventually it's going to come. A bit, a, a bit of patience is required, I guess, from your the part. second one, you know, um, it's going to come. You yeah. know, when you start stressing about situations that you can't control, then, you know, you, nothing you can do about it. I just know that I'm up there. I know that I'll be any of them guys in the top five, in the top ten. And it is what it is. If it's Joe, then, you know, thank God, thank you. Mm. It's Joe and great fight for Britain and whatnot. But if it's not, then I'll knock down whoever they put in front of me to fight him or fight for the WBA. Anyone who it is, I'll, I believe in myself. Well, you've shown an awful lot the last uh, three fights, and congrats on the win again in Cardiff. And good to see you, mate. Back to being a dad. Uh, yeah, back to being a dad, indeed. Don't let your don't let, don't let your kids. I can't. I don't imagine you taking four kids out. And just thinking, <laughs> no, no. Can't even look after himself. How does he do that? Um, I'm like your son on these trips, though. You well, got to look after me. Yeah, carer is more the. <laughs> carer, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a hell of a performance. Yeah, for, it for was. Him. The way to, to bounce back from the defeat to Rakimov, which he wasn't disgraced at all, but not easy to to know you've got to go into a high risk uh, fight again and perform so well as he as he did and I think he's earned the right to, to want to fight for a title shot again yeah absolutely I mean you're, you're there now yeah. the, that's why I said what is it is it mixed emotions what is it but it's the latter for him he knows he's there now he can just kind of look, patience is required but he'll be proud of himself and patience will be required for this man Lee Wood walks back into the fire on Saturday night live on the zone from Manchester against the danger man in the division and now the champion at featherweight Mexican Mauricio Lara of a ride in memory is the moment the fire stopped. Oh! It's complete heartbreak. You can't even do anything different. Where's that car? I just want to get this done and I want to prove a lot of people wrong. Redemption, revenge, whatever you want to call it, we get my belt back. It's a must win. So Mauricio Lara making the first defence against the man he took the belt off 12 weeks ago, live in Manchester on the zone on Saturday night. Both of our main eventers are sat down and we're ready to hear from them now. Here's Eddie Hearn. Well, welcome back to Manchester, ahead of the main event press conference, the rematch for the WBA featherweight championship of the world between the champion, Mauricio Lara, and now the challenger, Lee Wood. We saw a tremendous fight earlier this year in Nottingham, full of drama, Lee Wood winning that fight to get stopped and to see Mauricio Lara become world champion. We sat in the office, we talked about what was next, we talked about maybe waiting. There was no waiting from Lee Wood. He believed he can win this fight, he wanted the immediate rematch, and he's got it. This time in Manchester, with his fans travelling from Nottingham. And I'll start with the challengers team, and Ben, we'll start with you first. Mm -hmm. um, people talk about that towel in the first fight. If you receive victory on Saturday night, that may be one of the greatest towels of all time, because if you didn't throw that towel in, we wouldn't be here as quickly as we are after that first fight, ready for Lee to try and become world champion again. Yeah, you can, you know, there's, there's, uh, it was a scenario and a situation where there was no guarantees to, to the outcome. I, I can't sit here and say that the fight wouldn't have carried on going and Lee wouldn't have been victorious, and I can't say vice versa. So um, it was a decision that, that I made in the moment, but uh, with the understanding that we had this opportunity here um, and Lee had this, this rematch clause, and um, he's got the opportunity to, to get his title back, and I believe that he will do so. Difficult decision for you, you know, working for Lee as well. We know you believed in Lee, but you knew as well as a quick turnaround. And we sat in the office and, you know, we looked at all the eventualities. But this stubborn man here to the left had absolutely no doubts, did he? It wasn't a case of, I don't want to wait to see what might happen. I know I was beating him. I know how to beat him. And I want that rematch. Yeah, I think one of the key things with that is that the, the professional and the character that Lee is, Lee is forever in the gym, looks after himself, he doesn't balloon up in between, um, he's very 
disciplined in his life and his approach. Uh, it's a career for him and a full-time job for him. And I think that he's so disciplined when it comes to approaching fights and going into game plans that to actually take him away from a certain style matchup to then bring him back to it would have actually been more difficult than it will be to go straight into a, a quick turnaround. Is it a case of same as last time, doing all the right things last time? Obviously got caught by that shot, but do you expect a more aggressive Maurizio Lara this time around? I think that I think you hit the nail on the head there. I think he was actually more respectful of Lee's power than we probably anticipated. He was a lot less reckless in the fight than we had anticipated, being honest. And I think the fact that he did eventually get the shot that he was looking for, the fight might actually play out a little bit, little bit more how we anticipated the first fight to, to play out. So um, some adjustments, of course, and I'm sure Mauricio and his team will have some adjustments. But, um, you know, Lee, Lee knows what he needs to do and we're confident in the execution of that game plan. Lee, I know that, you know, I put a few different options to you. I didn't even see you consider one of them at any time. You know, you knew about the sport, you knew about the politics, you knew about mandatories, and you knew this was my chance. I know I've got this opportunity in front of me, and 100% that's going to be next for me. And we're just two days away now. Yeah, for sure. There's never even a thought in my mind that anything different was going to happen. Um, I know you tried to persuade me otherwise. Um, it was just so frustrating how the fight finished. Um, and like you say, it is a fast turnaround, but it's one that benefits me. If, if you said to me when I won the world title, right, 12 weeks' time, 13 weeks' time, you're back out, you need to get back in the gym, I'd be like, whoa, Eddie, come on, let me celebrate. Um, so that's why I believe it's one that favours me. Um, I was straight back in training, I had a little time with my kids, but I trained away as well. I'm ready to get this back and, um, and look good doing it. I don't think I've ever seen a fighter get stopped but go into a rematch so confident with that look in his eye, but also probably more confident than you were going into the first fight as well. You've been there, you've seen it, you've experienced the power, and you have no doubts you become world champion again on Saturday night. Yeah, no doubts at all. Um, that don't, that's not me saying it's going to be an easy fight because it's, it could be far from an easy fight, but I'm prepared for anything he brings. The first time around, you know, it's hard because we haven't got his style against my style to look at. Now we've got that information, and now we know what he does when I do certain things, and... Um, I've been preparing for him for nearly a year in September from the previous fight, so I know him inside out, and um, I'm just going to go out there and prove that I'm the better fighter. Obviously, everyone looks for a narrative, everyone looks for a line, and, and one of the things that's said is this is almost like a last chance saloon for you to win that world title. We know Michael Conlon is fighting at the weekend, you've got Josh Ryan, who knows what could happen in the future, but is that the pressure that you put on yourself, not that what might happen in the future? You must become world champion again on Saturday. Yeah, for sure. It's a must-win fight. Um, there's a lot of pressure, and I love it. I thrive on it, and um, you know, whatever it takes Saturday night, I'm coming away with a win. This, this is what gets me up for it. You know, I can't, I can't afford to lose. That could be the end of the road if I lose, and it'd be very hard to come back from. And um, that's why I'm not thinking about losing. I've done everything I can do to win. I'm confident in winning. I know what I need to do to win. I know what I can't afford to do. I'm gonna go out and do it. And finally, we know that the story's been incredible, the ups and downs, but to become a two-time world champion on Saturday is almost like a different kind of legacy uh, and will be a special moment for you and, and the thousands coming from Nottingham as well on Saturday it's going to be amazing to fight in Manchester Arena but as I said to create that legacy as a two-time world champion be huge for you yeah it's one for the history books um, and the main reason I'm still fighting I'm still sat here today is because my dream is still in the pipeline I'm still confident it's going to happen and I'm going to be the first person to headline at the City Grand who's uh, stayed up in the Premiership if you didn't know the Premier League doing really well <laughs> um, but yeah that's the main reason I'm still fighting you know my dream is in sight um, I need to get my belt back on Saturday night which I'm confident in doing and um, it's over to you to, to be one step closer could even be next well thank you Lee thank you Ben we move to the right and we'll start with Alfie Sharman from the zone Alfie it's been an incredible run uh, over the last couple of weeks I mean going not just with matchroom events of course Ryan Garcia against Javonta Davis even our friend KSI doing some great numbers for you but you know going back to Anthony Joshua and Cordina Rakimov and Canelo against Ryder and Taylor, Taylor Cameron last week just incredible and, and huge viewership on the zone as well another great fight for the schedule on Saturday night. Yeah in incredible thanks Eddie uh, and to your point there I, I kind of found myself on Sunday morning thinking how can you how can you better uh, you know, Katie Taylor in Dublin, homecoming in an amazing fight. Obviously, uh, congratulations to Chantel. And the answer was quick. It's back here in Manchester. 
amazing fight city with two absolute warriors ready to put it on the line. As you said, we've had you know an incredible uh, few weeks on the zone um, with top tier fighters on both sides of the Atlantic um, fighting on our platform, and it doesn't stop there. We've got you know plenty of headline fights coming up: Clarissa Shield, Tommy Mungia, Virgil Ortiz Jr., Dalton Smith, Regis Progre, Edgar Belanga, uh, to name a few. So. Um, it's a really great time for us, um, but looking for Saturday, um, you know, everyone in here saw the first fight, lots of predictions. Some may have predicted it, uh, the outcome, some may not. Um, frankly, in my opinion, you know, predictions go out the window here. Saturday's a completely new fight, um, a new beast uh, with both men, obviously, um, in great shape and ready to go. Lee's very much looking to get that, that belt back, and Mauricio looks like he's not willing to let it go. So. Um, wish them both, uh, you know, best, uh, best of luck, and uh, make sure you tune in Saturday on the uh, on the zone live worldwide. Thank you, Alfie and team. Lara now as well. Welcome back. Um, a massive moment for you. A great win last time around, but so important to keep this momentum. Huge fights out there on both sides of the pond, UK and America. And your man and your team believe this will be a faster job on Saturday night. Obviamente fue una, una noche increíble, una, una pelea enorme la última vez, eh, lo ganaron y obviamente la idea es seguir con ese hambre y seguir manteniendo ese estatus como, como campeones del mundo porque hay muchas grandes eh, oportunidades, no solo en, en, aquí en el Reino Unido, también en Estados Unidos, pero están confiados en que Mauricio puede ganar el sábado por la noche. Sí, así es, eh, muchísimas gracias. Antes que nada, eh, para nosotros es muy importante venir otra vez, es la cuarta vez que Mauricio viene a a pelear en Inglaterra. En la tercera se hizo, se cumplió el sueño de ser campeón mundo. Eh, y en efecto, eh, para nosotros fue una gran noche, una noche que se cumplió el sueño de Mauricio. Nosotros hemos estado mucho tiempo en, al lado de él en su carrera. Y como aquella, y lo dijimos aquella primera vez, lo decimos ahora, eh, ellos nos dieron la oportunidad y ahora nosotros como campeón del mundo tenemos el compromiso de regresar a la oportunidad. Qué bueno que se hace esta pelea, fue una gran guerra y creemos nosotros que este próximo sábado va a ser igual y que la gente va a salir contenta, y, pero obviamente sabemos que Mauricio tiene mucho, muchas posibilidades de ganar y para hacer una, un legado en esta, en esta división. So first and foremost, we have to thank you for the opportunity. This is uh, Mauricio's fourth time uh, in this country. On the third time he was here, he managed to uh, win that world title on a fantastic night. It was a dream that he'd had for a long time. I said it the first time we had the opportunity um, that we would give the opportunity back to Lee Wood if we managed to win. And it's great that we can go on to have another great fight here. The last one was a, was a war, but we're totally focused and believe in Mauricio's possibilities in creating a legacy in the sport. Thank you. Mauricio, welcome back. Um, last time was a, a tough fight for you. It was a patient Mauricio Lara. You got there in the end. Do we expect a more reckless, a more exciting, a more violent Mauricio Lara on Saturday night? Bienvenido, eh, Mauricio. La última vez que estuve aquí vimos un rendimiento así con mucha paciencia, eh, sin ese descuido, ¿no? Esperamos, pero esta vez esperamos un Mauricio Lara que va a ser más descuidado, que va a ser más violento, que va a buscar hacer el trabajo ya en menos tiempo. Hola, buenas tardes a todos. Claro, claro, tenemos mucha tranquilidad. Sabemos que nos hemos preparado muy bien. Hemos tenido un campamento excelente. De verdad que quiero rectificar mi victoria y sí, como nos dices, vengo a buscar la victoria más rápido y, y saldré, saldré desde el primer round a buscar el knockout. So, yeah, so, as, first and foremost, I want to say hi to everyone. Yeah, as you say, uh, last time was a calm performance, but I'm really confident in my training camp and what we've done. And I want to almost back up and cement that victory. And I want to, as you say, do it in, in quicker fashion, and I'll be looking for that knockout from the very first round. You have cemented yourself as one of the most exciting pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world. There's some huge fights out there for you in the UK and, of course, in, in Mexico and in America as well. A must-win fight for you on Saturday night. Sí, um, obviamente, ahora estás en la posición de... Alguien, muchas personas piensan que estás en rankings muy buenos para, para ser un libra por libra um, grande en el deporte. Hay oportunidades, no solamente en el Reino Unido, y el Estados Unidos también en México. Es una pelea que tienes que ganar el sábado, ¿no? Para seguir con ese legado. Eh, claro, ¿no? Sabemos, estamos, hay muchas grandes cosas que, que vienen después. Como lo he dicho, primero estoy enfocado en esa victoria. Wood no es cualquier peleador. Como lo he dicho, tiene mi respeto hacia mí arriba del ring. Y bueno, este, vamos a rectificar mi victoria, como lo he dicho de nuevo. 
y voy a ganar contundentemente esta vez para seguir marcando historia en el boxeo. Yeah, of course, you know, <coughs> big things are to come, but first I have to, as I've said, kind of cement that victory. Lee Wood isn't just any boxer, you know, it'll be a difficult fight, but it's about continuing, and as I say, cementing that victory and making history in this sport. And finally, to both fighters, Lee, I'll ask you the question. I know the traditional reply is by any means necessary, but in your heart of hearts, having fought this man before, do you believe you win this fight inside the distance on Saturday night? Yes, it's, it's highly likely, to be honest. I think I'm going to beat him up and break him down um, and possibly stop him late, and that's how I see the fight going. Maurizio, might be a silly question for you, but same result as last time. Maurizio, Lara, by knockout on Saturday. Una pregunta un poco tonta, pero mismo resultado el sábado por la noche, un KO por Mauricio Lara. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you, Lee. Tremendous main event on Saturday night, of course. Mauricio Lara against Lee Wood for the WBA Featherweight Championship of the World from the Manchester Arena, live and exclusive on the zone. A tremendous undercard as well. Jack Cattrall, the people's undisputed champion, against Dara Foley in a Real unofficial eliminator for the 140-pound world title. Terry Harper defends her WBA world title against Ivan Habazin. Akib Fiaz in a big step up. Tremendous English welterweight championship fight between Danny Bull and Jamie Robinson. Aaron Bowen, Campbell Hatton, of course, the professional debut of William Crawler. Tremendous fight added to a tremendous schedule on the zone. We've been non-stop for weeks gone by and non-stop for weeks to come. Whatever you do, don't miss all the excitement and all the action live on the zone on Saturday night. Right, yeah, it all starts at 5 o'clock at the Aero Arena. If you're heading to the venue, the doors open at 5, uh, 10 past 5, first bout with Aaron Bowen. Um, Maurizio Lara is going to start fast, isn't he, I think? He is. This time, um, we touched on it there. It was a bit of a... Look, he, he, he does start slow, yeah. but I think in a fight of this magnitude, even the last one, I don't think you can afford to... Um, I thought to lull himself into no. the rhythm where dic Wood dictates terms long, in a slower pace, he can't afford that to happen. You, you want to be set in traps looking for that shot as opposed to becoming a little desperate looking for the shot. So he's going to have to be busy, he's going to have to be moving his head. The, the height and the range difference, mm. I mean, Wood's got much longer arms, he's got two or three inches of height on him. It's, it's his fight when it's long, he's taken behind that busy jab, measuring the distance the whole time, creating a barrier between him and, and Lara. But when he put his hands together, the Mexican, and he went through those really ferocious gears, every time he did that in spots and spurts, he, he looked like he had Lee Wood in Yeah, I think that's why feet are so important for Lee Wood. He's got to bring him out of range, bring him straight back in to fire back the counters. He can't plant his feet when he was allowing Lara to, you know, hurt him to the body when he was planting the feet. So he's got to move, get behind that jab again, control the distance with that lead hand to the body, stabbing it. There's a lot about the constitution mm. of Lee Wood though, that given the shot that landed, could cause hesitation in a, in a fighter, but he had absolutely none, wanted the fight straight away, pushed for it against the advice of a few people around him, Eddie Hearn wanted him to have one more before walking back into this one, but he said, no, I know what I need to do. He felt he was in control at the time that he got caught with that left hook and he knew what he had to do to, to correct it. He got a very, very good team around him with Ben Davison and, and Lee Wiley, of course, in the, in the granular detail of the tactics. And without speaking to him, you, you know if a fighter really believes that they can do it. There was absolutely no hesitation in his eyes, in his body language whatsoever. Whether that translates to a victory on Saturday at all is, uh, is another case. And this man will know that even if he's far behind in the fight, he is always one punch away from victory. The body is where he could be vulnerable. And if we do see Lee Wood switch to, to Southpaw, the, the, the long left hand to the body too could be dangerous. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, it's so interesting, isn't it? The fight is so interesting. There's so many ways it can be won or lost. Eddie? Well, you, you heard from, from Lee Wood there, Ed, about um, just, just, I suppose, his um, lack of hesitation for the fight. There was a few people around him that wanted him to maybe have um, one more in between. What was your experience of the situation and, and getting this one over the line? So it's quite funny, like, we, we talk about these uh, behind the scenes documentaries at the moment for sports. Ours is coming very soon. But it's one of those where I wish the cameras were in the office when we were having those conversations because there's two conversations. One is with um, Lee Wood and one is with Ben Davison. Right, the first quickly, how quickly after the fight is this? Like, 
you know, we need to know because we're looking at Josh Warrington against Bruce. Well, the week after the fight? Yeah. And, you know, he was in the office right. within a week. Right, right. And the first conversation, because the fighter is emotional, the fighter doesn't always know what's best for him. So the conversation at first is with a trainer and the management, and that was a conversation between me and Ben. And I said, Ben, Mauricio Lara has to rematch within 90 days. It's a fast turnaround. He's just got stopped. In my opinion, it might be wise to allow Josh Warrington to fight Maurizio Lara, and you are guaranteed a shot at a winner. In the meantime, the mandatory comes in for Komatov as well, which just starts to just make Lee Wood question whether this move would be actually as smooth as we, we anticipated. Irrelevant. And Ben, I think, part of Ben felt like, I know he can beat him, and part of him felt like it's a fast turnaround, you know, he's only going to have two weeks off, he's going to go back to the gym. Lee Wood was so adamant, like, no one could have persuaded him. You know, I said to him, look, are you sure? I, like, I know I can beat him. He said, I got hurt by one shot. He said, it wasn't like a sustained beating. It wasn't a really difficult fight physically. I got hurt and I never recovered. And if he wins on Saturday night, Ben Davison's towel in that fight looks unbelievable, yeah. by the way, because he's allowed him to come through that really not unscathed, but undamaged and come out. I've never seen a fighter get stopped and be more confident about the rematch than he was about the first fight. Yeah. He had, he without doubt, had doubts going into that first fight about Lara, about his skill, about his power. Now he's felt it all, he's seen it all. You heard him acknowledge up there, I know it's dangerous. I know I might get chinned, but I know how to beat him, exactly well, for, how for to beat year. him. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. And, and, you know, Lara, you just never know with Maurizio Lara. You're going to get a dangerous Lara, but, you know, these fighters sometimes from Mexico come from extreme, let's say, humble beginnings. When they start getting paid, and now Mauricio Lara's made quite a lot of money, are you that same dangerous man that you were when you came to the Meet bubble? The no, I, I don't think he has, but I just, I just wonder. I've seen it before. I'm just trying to make a case for Lee Wood. <laughs> does he look you know? any, of course. Does he look any tight? No. To you? Uh, yeah, he's, he's always tight, isn't he? You know, and they do. These guys make weight their way. Do you know what I mean? They, 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 they are, they're brutal at making weight. He's not big for the weight. No, but at the same time, every time you see him drawn at the weigh-in and, and, you know, they take a lot of weight off late. And Lee Wood, I thought, I thought Lee Wood looked big yesterday at the workout. He looks healthier than he, he did. He does, really yeah, but also I, I felt like he looked big and thick at the weigh-in yesterday. Not so much today, as you'd expect. But I don't know. I don't, like, maybe it's not a delusion from Lee Wood. Do you know what I mean? It's just a complete belief of what he's got to do to win this fight. Darren, it was a mistake, wasn't it? It was a mistake. It, this is boxing. I think with his maturity and his experience, he understands this can happen. This is boxing. I mean, they're with a danger, man. Uh, with, with the fight happening so quickly, from a, pro a fighter's perspective, I feel he's probably thinking, look, I've done this year's prep. I don't want to go into another fight. I want to go straight into Lara, a fighter I know. Um, Eddie, just a quick word on Terry Harper and Ivana Haberzin. Yeah. She was Jess McCaskill's uh, mandatory at 147, one of the reasons she could take this fight at late notice. And we know she was in the gym with Katie Taylor, keeping fit. But um, what does that do to the, the situation with uh, Sandy Ryan, McCaskill, and, and the, the 147 situation you were trying to end? Well, we, we had an agreement with uh, Rick Ramos in writing for um, Jessica McCaskill to fight Habazin and then fight Sandy Ryan for Undisputed. You know, we couldn't get that over the line contractually at the moment. So there was a stalling of that process. We're still talking to, to Rick and Jessica owe him a call, but you know, Terry Harper needed an opponent. That fight didn't have a date, mm. and she jumped at the opportunity. You know, I really wanted to deliver for Terry Harper. It was horrible to go to a fighter the day of a fight. I mean, it's one thing going even the week of the fight or a couple of weeks before, but to do it on the day of the fight. But the benefit here is, is because Terry Harper isn't tight of the weight and she's kind of not eating herself into 154, but very natural at 154, there was no, oh, I need to make weight again. If Terry Harper had to make weight at that weigh-in last week, refuel for Saturday, That's and then make weight again, this this is a tough fight, by the way. Yeah. Ivana Bazin, former world champion, has been in camp with Katie Taylor, done like tens and tens of rounds with her, held her own, a strong fighter. That, I think, is going to be Terry's greatest test here. It's all very well saying, I feel much stronger at 154. You're just not 154. That's like you moving up. I mean, how many divisions was it? You know, lightweight, light welterweight, welter. Four divisions. Yeah. That's like you all of a sudden finding a cruiserweight and going, it's all right, I feel better. Probably good You're now. just not a cruiserweight. Yeah, no, he will make cruiserweight now. <laughs> but, but you, do you know what I'm saying? It's, you're not yeah. a cruiserweight. So is she really 
a super welterweight. It was only not two fights ago that she went points with Clarissa Shields. Yeah. You know, some point, I mean, and, and she's only, middle. That, and that's her only loss yeah. in seven years. Yeah. She's a big, strong opponent. Terry's got to use her speed. But the danger is, he's just the size. That's the danger. She's a much, much bigger. You know, she's going to be making weight to make 154. Yeah. Not, you know, Terry weighed 150 for the Cecilia Brackhouse fight. Mm. She can't, she can't even get to 154. Mm. But she's there because she's a world champion. And the danger is the bigger opponents will cause her a problem. Um, for Jack Catterall, uh, good test on his comeback. Another southpaw, of course, he's been out the ring for a good 18 months now. Dara Foley, for, full of confidence. For, for the winner, um, how close are they to a fight with Regis oh, Progre? I mean, look, it's, when we signed Regis Progre, one of the names we had in mind, of course, was Jack Catterall. I think it's quite a big pressure fight for Jack Catterall, this, because you know how harsh boxing fans are? Like, you should be the undisputed world champion, and then you just get a win, but, you know, don't look spectacular. And it's like, oh, well, actually, are you as good as we thought we were? He's actually, I said to him and Sam Jones, you've got to be aggressive in this fight. You've got to try and make the fight because Foley has got a lot of chat, but he's quite smart. He's not the guy that walks you down and has a war, really. Do you know what I mean? He's quite cagey, he's a southpaw. He looks to land the counter as he did against Robbie Davis. But if I'm Jack Catcher and I'm the team, I want to, go, I want to see him go out and back him up. Yeah, back him up, beat him up and make a statement. All right, thanks very much. Uh, all starts at uh, 5 o'clock from the Manchester Arena Saturday afternoon. We've got three fights for you on before the bell. Cyrus Pattinson will be joining us uh, to call those. Uh, ones that will start at 7 o'clock uh, on the zone. Danny Bourne, Jason Robinson, uh, Jamie Robinson will be fighting for the English welterweight title. Aki Fiaz against Kostin Ion after a really good performance against Dean Dodge last time out. Terry Harper uh, defends a 154-pound title with the WBA against Ivana Havazin. Uh, Jack Catterall and Dara Foley, as you heard, uh, in a contention for what is essentially an eliminator at 140 pounds, all leading to the big one. Leeward dances with the devil again in Manchester on Saturday night against the new WBA champion, the Mexican Mauricio Lara. We'll see you at the way in one o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Thanks for your company this afternoon, and we'll see you then. A variety of memory is the moment the fire stopped. Oh! This complete heartbreak. You can't even do anything different. Where's that cap? I just want to get this done, and I want to prove a lot of people wrong. Redemption, revenge, whatever you want to call it, to get my belt back. It's a must win.